let's now implement the is arithmetic sequence method. So now rather than returning an arithmetic sequence being an array, we simply want to say we take a possible arithmetic sequence being an array. And then if it is arithmetic sequence, then we return true. Otherwise, we return false. Okay, let's review what arithmetic sequence is. That means there's a common difference between every two consecutive elements. Okay, so that means for all consecutive elements, there's gonna be uh, uh, the, there's gonna be a common difference between them. Okay, let's see some example over here and see uh, what are the special cases. Okay, so now let's go to iPad illustration over here. So now let's think about what illustration, uh, what uh, what might be the special cases. Let's say. Let's say if I say IA is simply pointing to this. Okay, so now I say IA1. Okay, so we have this is arithmetic sequence method to program with. And then we just got IA1. For example, what should that be? And also IA2. Let's say it's pointing to some array which has only one element. Let's say zero, and then I will put four over here. Okay, at index zero, we got four. And IA3 over here, let's say that one over there, over here, we have 0 and 1. Okay, And then let's say over here we got 4 uh, and then 7, for example. Okay, And then we got another one over here. Let's say we have IA4. Let's say we got another one over here. So now, 0, 1, and 2. So in this case, we can have 4, 7, and then we have, let's say, 10. OK, one more. IA, 5. And over here, let's say it's also of size 3. 0, 1, and 2. So we got 4, 7, and let's say we got 11. OK, so now, uh, it, I think it's easier to see uh, 4 for these two, let's talk about these two first. So is this, uh, so it's gonna be one, uh, IA1, IA2, IA3, IA4. Okay, let's talk about true or false. Okay, let's think about it. Okay, so now for these, for this uh, example of, uh, what about IA4? IA4 over here, you can see that, uh, what's the difference between, every, uh, for all the two consecutive uh, numbers? Between four and seven, we got three. So because four plus three will be seven, right? And then this one here, also three. So it is. Okay, what about IA5 over here? In that case, you can see that from here to here, we got three. From here to here, we got four. So they are not equal. Okay, so that, that means it's false. Okay, and I can say that any, any size of the sequence that's less than or equal to two is actually uh, are actually special cases like here IA one IA two IA three they're all special cases okay so now this is how you can think of it again so we want to make sure all the consecutive elements have a common difference that means for all so it's really really like all multiples of five right so that's uh, we are handling this kind of problem over here so now the way we do it is as long as you cannot find out any violation witness to prove that this property is actually violated, then it should be true. In this case, can we find out any, uh, let's say for this case, for IA3, can we find out any witness to say that, okay, you can see that the only consecutive pair we have is four to seven, which is three. Can we find out any witness to say that, oh, we actually don't have a consistent uh, uh, common difference. In the case of IA5, we do because you can see the witness will be the combination of three and four. They are not the same. That's a witness. Over here, we only got one. So it's not enough to be a witness. So that has to be true because we cannot find any violation witness. Similarly, over here, we don't even have any consecutive elements, right? So it's automatic, automatically a, a arithmetic sequence as well because we cannot prove that it's wrong. As long as you cannot prove that something is wrong, it's gonna be correct, okay? And also for IA1, it's empty, special case, okay? You also cannot find any witness over there to prove that the property is wrong, so it's also true. So now all we gotta do is, if you know that the size of the array input is actually less than or equal to two, then that means the uh, input must, uh, the output must be just true. 
Otherwise, we have to somehow figure out, first of all, the difference between the first two elements over here, for example, four and seven, and four and seven here, to see what it is, and pretend that it is the common difference. It's gonna be the common difference because it's just one of the uh, uh, consecutive two elements. And then we just go from, uh, starting from index one over here, and then try to see, uh, sorry, starting from index two, starting from index two over here and try to see if uh, the rela relationship between the current elements and the previous one is really the common difference, right? In this case, three and three, they are the same. In this case, we got four and three, they are not the same. Okay, that's kind of the idea. Okay, so now let's see how we can program this. Okay, let's go back to Android Studio. Let's now go for, go to the program that. So what I would do is, first of all, I would say Boolean result is simply true for a reason because I will only try to I will only bother to do any further processing if I know that IA dot length is strictly larger than two. Because when IA dot length is equal to zero or one or two, I know that they are automatically arithmetic sequence, in which case I will simply bypass the if statements uh, body and then return the result, which is true. Okay, uh, arrays of lengths zero, one, and two are automatically arithmetic sequence. Okay, that's what we have. Okay, and now over here, so if we know that the array size is actually at least three, in this case, what we can do is we can say integer, the common difference is gotta be IA one minus IA, IA zero, right? Exactly how we did for IA one seven minus four, for example, in this case, right? And then we're gonna run the loop. Starting from the second index over here, as I said before, second index over here, and then we can say for integer i is assigned to two and i is less than i a dot length i plus plus. Okay, so I can say uh, I can say either result is assigned to result and okay i a at position i minus i a my uh at position the previous position which is uh, you can see that this is i okay notice that this is i minus one being the position it's very different from when you say this minus one right very different okay so the current position at position i is minus the element at the previous position which is i minus one that should be exactly equal to the common difference okay this is one way to do it okay this is version one Okay, as we learned before, let's have a quick review from uh, when we did uh, the uh, all multiples of five. Okay, remember we actually got different versions over there, right? So now we got uh, version one, version two, and version three, exactly the same problem over here. Okay, let me just mention that very quickly to you. Okay, it's arithmetic sequence over here. So now what I can say is version one. Version one correct from accumulation using conjunction. Okay, now I'm gonna give you version two, which is wrong. Wrong because the result is not accumulated. Okay, so now version two would be simply something like this. Of course, I'm gonna comment it out to show you that it's wrong, okay? So now in this case, I'll simply say result is just assigned to something like this. Okay, how can this be wrong? Let me just give you one example on the iPad. Okay, how can this be wrong? Okay, let's say I got IA over here. Let's say we just have something like this. Zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, we got, let's say six, and then eight, 10, nine, 11. Let's see that, okay? So now what's gonna happen is in the, uh, over here, since uh, we first calculate what the common difference should be over here, so the common difference 
should be just two. And then starting from index two, right? Let me use a different color. Starting from index two, now uh, 10 minus eight, we do have two, okay? Uh, 10 minus eight, we do have two, which is equal to two. Okay, this is okay. Now, when we get to the third position over here, nine minus 10 is actually minus one. So this will give us false, right? Because in this case, uh, this will be nine minus uh, 10, which will give us minus one, which is not the same as uh, the two that we just calculated, it would be false. However, this false is not accumulated using conjunction. So it will be forgotten if, it's, if it is not the last elements. Okay, so now let's try again. And then when we go, can we reach the next one over there? When we get to the, uh, this index over here, you will see that 11 minus nine will give us two again. And two is again equal to the two over here. So right, so, the, uh, so now that it's going to override the previous false because every time we simply just reassign the result. Okay, hopefully you can see that this version is actually wrong, okay? Okay, this version is wrong, so I will just comment it out. And also for version three, version three, correct, because uh, exit as soon as result becomes false. Okay, so now for version two, uh, version three over here, I would say for integer i is uh, initialized to be two, i less than i a dot length and i plus plus. Let me just copy version two first of all, and then I will uh, tell you what the extension should be. Result is assigned to, uh, let me just copy this quickly to save time. Okay, so what, what I will do is I will include the result itself as part of the state condition using conjunction. This means, as I said before, now when I when I'm trying to calculate this case over here, let's say I'm currently in this particular uh, iteration. Okay, so now when I calculate nine minus 10, that will give me minus one, which is not equal to the uh, common difference two. So that means it's going to give me, so this uh, equation over here with uh, uh, minus one equals equals two would be false. So result would be reassigned to false. And then when I try to go back to the loop header to re uh, to reevaluate the state condition false and anything will just be false anyway. So that means the state condition over here will be false and we exit from the loop and return false, okay? So version three also works. You can choose either version one or version three. Version two is just wrong. I should know why it is wrong. I may ask you that in the exam. Okay, version one is fine. Okay, only version three over here. Let's try to uh, test it. Okay, so now let me just run the utilities tester very quickly, and the test cases are over here. Okay, so we are calculating for 11, 12, okay, over here, exactly over here. Okay, okay let me just put it here. Okay. And now let's calculate the result. Okay, over here, if you go to uh, is arithmetic sequence over here, let's still go one by one, NT array would be true, good. Array of size one is also true. Array of size two, doesn't matter how they were uh, arranged, either sorting ascendingly or descendingly, doesn't matter. So it will also be too true over here. And then how about this? Over here, the common difference is simply just three, starting from five, right? So that'll be true. And what about this one? The common difference is simply minus three, right? Five plus minus three will be two, two plus minus three would be minus one, et cetera. So that will also be true, okay? Let's see over here. You can see that over here, where is the violation witness, okay? You can see we assume that the common difference is three, but now when you go from here to here, you actually got the, uh, the difference between uh, 11 and 15 is actually four, which is not equal to the difference between the first two items, so that's false, okay? And then similarly, so that's false, okay? And then similarly, you can see that assuming that the common difference is minus three, when you go from two to minus two, here is the trouble, right? Because the common difference, uh, the difference over there is actually four, oh, sorry, minus four, which is not equal to minus three, even though minus two and minus uh, to minus five is again minus three. But as long as you got at least one 
a violation witness, that means uh, overall it's not an arithmetic sequence. That's why it's also false. Okay. So now, I think it's uh, the problem itself is not, not really difficult, but what I, what I really want you to learn from this example over here is I want you to draw a connection to how we discussed previously about uh, all multiples of five over here, because what we are dealing with are the same problem over here, the same category of problem, which means given a collection, we want to see if for every, for every element or all the elements satisfy certain properties, right? Now, in that case, you have to use conjunction to accumulate your result. That's version one. Otherwise, you can try to not you can try not to accumulate the result. But as soon as you find out there's a violation witness, in that case, you should exit from the loop right away. And the way to achieve that is by including the result as part of the uh, state condition. Okay, so that's really something I want you to review very carefully uh, between these two problems. Well, later on we talk about uh, the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, methods is again the same idea.